Good morning, everyone. I want to take a moment uh, this morning to welcome you to our time of prayer and devotion and to first of all um, update you on the COVID situation here in Stoddard County. Health officials have confirmed only 13 new cases of COVID-19 over the last six days here in Stoddard County. We are now down to only 36 active cases in the entire county. So for that, we give God much praise today. We do have many prayer requests uh, to share with you on this Tuesday morning. Uh, let's pray for Rebecca Williams again today. She is still not feeling well. Michelle Walker's grandpa, Gerald Hudson, is battling pneumonia. Uh, Jen Marlin needs prayer for healing of dystonia. Hannah has received bad test results recently that are indicative of cancer, and they are awaiting more tests to confirm or deny and to determine the severity of her cancer. Kristen Contino's cousin, Brother Greg M., needs prayer for a heart condition. Zechariah Osgood is dealing with a lot of stress and needs our prayers. John Vaughn has an unspoken need. We have some who are dealing with pregnancy issues. Matt and Michaela Perkins are trying to start a family and have not uh, been able to do so. have had some miscarriages. Need our prayers today. Austin and Alyssa's unborn baby has a heart defect that will require surgery as soon as he's born. And then we have uh, Beth Wheatley's daughter Mindy and Sally Walter. Brantley needs our prayers. Allison, Nick Cersei, Karen Pratt's mother, Gerald Yeely, Johnny Ray Hagee, Willow, and Sylvia Laramore's daughter, all needing our prayers for continued recovery today. Those who are battling cancer, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker, Edie Percival, Diane Escher, Versi Gibbs, Josh Soberg, Melena Cummins, John Fitzgerald, Dwayne Lewis, a friend of Terry Adams, Marsha Moore's family member, Ari Bowers, Wanda Barnes, Robert Wicks, Christy Smith, Lisa Workman, Evelyn Marshall, Brother Steve Williford, Claire, Michael Boland, Phyllis Robinette, David Harris, Brother Anthony Trimble, Kim Stinson, and Linda Fox. I also ask that you continue to pray for my uncle, Delbert Bryant, although he has uh, been declared cancer-free, uh, he is still finishing up some precautionary chemo. In other physical needs today, Kelly has been battling a severe staph infection. Jen Marlin, Bonnie Pulaski, Roxanne Carson, uh, Terry Adams' grandson Ethan, and Annette all have health issues. Britt Moore and James Graham have back problems. Tim Workman and Emily Stanley have diabetes. Beulah Ziegler, Russ, Ron Bryant, and Tim all have Parkinson's disease. Cheryl LaChance has chronic liver and stomach issues. Renee has hip and knee problems. Abel Ray suffers with PKU. Abram Page has GNAO1 disorder. Sophia needs a touch for her eyesight. Sally Waller's granddaughter Magnolia needs prayer. Baby Elsie needs continued prayer after recent heart surgery for her full recovery. Linda Brown is recovering from a broken shoulder. Shirley Garner is recovering from a broken hip and a fractured back, and Britt Moore's mother is recovering from a broken hip. Rue is preparing for a double lung retransplant surgery. Karen Pratt's father has an aneurysm in his aorta. Brother Marty DeLott has MS. Charlotte Kincaid and Debbie Biddick's friend Shirley both have kidney issues. Catherine's neighbor Jason has been in the hospital in serious condition. Brent Smith, Everett Hart, and missionary Robin Schutz's father have heart problems. Robbie Northrup and Kendra Ortiz are dealing with COPD. Sister Mara Sullivan has a autoimmune disease. Marsha Moore, Michael Parrott, and Terry Adams deal with chronic stomach issues. Bobby Larmy needs continued prayers for a blockage in an artery at the base of his brain. Elder brother and sister Perkins need continued prayers for healing, strength, and encouragement. Pam Wilcox needs prayer for complications after a recent surgery with fluid buildup on her lungs. Leslie Pride has dementia. Gary and Donna, Catherine, Sister Dorothy Cook, Brother Erickson, Andy Burnett, and Don Bowie are all still battling COVID as far as we know. 
Donna Luttrell, Del Sifford, Pastor Del Holman's mother, and James Weininger have been cleared of COVID but still dealing with post-COVID issues. Uh, there are family requests this morning for Angela Schweitzer's family, um, Mindy's family, Cheryl LaChance and family, uh, Grace's best friend whose parents are going through divorce, Annette and Dave uh, dealing with marital problems, Debbie Biddick's daughters Jessica and Jamie needing God's help in their relationships, and Marsha Moore's uh, family situation we need to continue praying about. So all of these are family issues that we need to continue to intercede for today. In our spiritual needs, let's remember Carmen's daughter, Grace, Lori Arbo's mother, Art Chandler, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Michelle Clark and her family, Caroline Sexton and family, Jennifer and Brenda, uh, their family, Debbie's daughter, Jamie and family, as well as her niece, Terry Adams' children, Sylvia's family, Tasha Ray's husband, Adam, and her sister, Heather, Pam Pulliam's children, Peggy Fiedler and her family, Beulah's family, Josiah, Barbara Owens, Haley, Carl, Rose, Evie, and Connor, Mark and Caitlin, Mingo Job Corps students, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter, Jennifer, and Judy's brother, Louis Medlin, need salvation today. In our other needs, let's keep praying for nursing home residents and shut-ins. Let's pray protection for students, teachers, and staff that work in our school systems. Let's pray for continued recovery from this pandemic and continue praying for all those who are struggling mentally and whose mental health problems have been exacerbated by this dark time that we've all been uh, going through. Uh, Nathan is battling depression. Elizabeth Riggins' son Patrick needs a miracle. Brother and Sister Woody's family needs prayers for comfort, healing, and restoration. Pastor Mark Tipton's ministry to the homeless needs our continued prayers. And Phil and Karen Sampson need our continued prayers for God's direction, for God to move in their um, ongoing situations with their finances. And we know that God cares about these needs this morning. I welcome each of you and thank you uh, for joining me. I have noticed uh, yesterday and, and this morning a couple of times that uh, I lose the stream and it recontinues, uh, picks back up again. And when I see that go down, I try to stop talking and, and wait for it to catch back up. So I don't know exactly how this is going today. I hope that this is uh, tenable for you. Uh, but let's go to the word of the Lord today, Psalm 19. I'm really excited about this devotion today. I believe it's very going to be very impactful for those of us who will take it to heart. Psalm 19, verse 14, says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the things that I'm dwelling upon, be acceptable in the sight of God. That was the psalmist's prayer. We need to understand that negativity is not acceptable in the sight of God. Negative thoughts come from one of two sources. They come from the enemy or they come from um, our own uh, personality or our carnal mind, we could say. That's where negative thoughts come from that we dwell upon. And we need to take action steps to turn the tide of those negative words and thoughts that are so pervasive in our lives. We need to take the Word of God and we need to create from the Word of God, put it in our own words, words to live by, and begin to speak those things over and over again as the antidote, as the counteraction to those negative thoughts that try to fill our minds. We need to understand that the truest thing about us is always what God says about us, and the Word declares what God says about us. So not what I think or feel, and not what others say, think, or do. Those are not the things that are the truest statements 
about me. What the Word of God says is truth. And we can become so paralyzed by the lies of the enemy and false beliefs that we've developed uh, through our own personality quirks and our own carnality that we can miss the plan of God that he has for us by a thousand miles. And so to counteract that, we must study the word. We must let our faith speak and then ask God to help us with, un uh, with any unbelief. I cannot operate by the way I feel. Let me confess to you this morning, there are days that I don't even feel saved. Amen. There are days that I don't feel um, like I am even a Christian. So there's days I don't feel like going on. I can't operate by my feelings. I operate by what I know from the Word of God, that I am a child of God, that I have been bought with the precious price of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we have to make a renewed commitment. I know I'm not the only one that struggles with, with these thoughts and this negativity, uh, but we need to make a, a commitment to quit that negative thinking. And just like any toxic bad habit, you won't overcome it overnight. But you can decide to stop that behavior. It may take time. It may take perseverance, attention, and strength to stop that. But the reason why that is is because for many of us, it has become so deeply ingrained. It's even a part of uh, our personality type to think negatively or cynically. Um, and so it's almost second nature to many of us. But once you are aware that you're doing it, and that's what I'm trying to do is make you aware of this struggle that you're probably dealing with, um, then understand that you're going to need to interrupt yourself. You're going to need to pause in your thoughts and say, hey, I'm doing it again. I've got to stop this. So becoming aware of this behavior is the key to changing it. And when we take control of our thoughts and our words, we take back our life. And so I want to challenge you to start creating a list of daily affirmations to speak to yourself. I'm not talking about just, uh, you know, self-help or nothing. I'm talking about the Word of God. Take the Word of God and create your own mantras, your own positive statements out of the Word of God and begin practicing, practice speaking that power and truth back into your life by speaking those words of life. Start out with any negative thoughts that dominate your thinking and list any lies that you are believing. List those negative things that weigh you down and hinder you from living your best life. And anything that doesn't align with God's word, word identify those. And then secondly, find scriptures that are antidotes to those particular negative thoughts or lies. And those spiritual truths will free you from those lies from those strongholds, and they are strongholds. The Apostle Paul said you have to cast down every evil imagination that exalts itself against the work of God in your life. So take those thoughts and words captives uh, to the truth of God and choose words that are in alignment with the Word of God. And then lastly, study those scriptures and, and as I said, craft those positive statements agreeing with them that you can claim and speak back those things into your life. Uh, make your list and begin to speak those things. Brother Mark Perkins is already a step ahead of us. Yesterday morning he texted me after watching the devotion with a positive statement. He said, this is my statement that I'm going to use every day. And so I thought this morning that would be good for all of us to think on what can we take from the Word of God Negativity, I want to say it again, is not acceptable. The psalmist said, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. And we know that negativity is not acceptable in his sight. So let's discard that. Let's forsake it. Let's repent of it just like we would any gross sin and give it to the Lord. And let's begin to speak his word into our situations. Uh, we cannot serve a God uh, who requires faith. We cannot serve him with an attitude of negativity. And the word clearly tells us that those who come to God, they who come to him, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently 
seek him. We don't have any trouble believing that he is, but we've also got to believe that he's going to reward us as we live for him and that good things are going to happen. I believe that good things are going to happen in prayer this morning. Amen. Let's lift these needs up today and let's believe God to move in every situation. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your abiding presence. I know that you're already here today. You were waiting for this moment for your people to begin to call upon your name. And we're so blessed to have this audience with you. We're so thankful, Lord, that we serve a God that cares about us and a God that can hear us and can answer our prayers today. Oh, holy God, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy, Lord, of this time this morning and so much more. We want to give you our best effort today. We want to communicate with you. We want to feel, Lord, your presence and hear your voice speaking back to us today in the still moments of this day. Let it be according to your will. Let your will be done today in earth as it is in heaven. I bind every negative thought today. I cast down every evil imagination. I cast down anything, Lord, that would drag us downward today. Lord, but we want to be lifted up in your presence and lifted up in, in, in heavenly places this morning with you and with one another, oh God. And we trust that that's happening right now to everyone that's praying this prayer with me. And so we come today on behalf of these needs and we speak life instead of death. We speak wellness instead of sickness. We speak joy in place of sorrow in the name of Jesus. We speak strength today in the place of weakness. Oh God, you are our source. You are the healer of our bodies. Hallelujah. We believe for Rebecca today to be healed. We believe for Gerald Hudson for his healing right now. We believe for Jen Marlin and for Hannah and for Greg today in the name of Jesus. You're able to heal every heart condition. You're able to heal pneumonia right now, God. You're able to heal cancer in the name of Jesus. We pray for Zach today, God, that you will be his relief from the stress that he's under. Help him not to focus upon negative thoughts today but Lord, to focus upon the truth of your word. We pray for Brother John Vaughn today. Lord, you see what he's going through right now. And we bring that need to you. And we trust you, God, for your help and your strength and your deliverance for him this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray for all these who are dealing with pregnancy issues today. We pray for Matt and Michaela, Lord, today, that you would encourage them, Lord, that you would strengthen their minds today and comfort their hearts in the loss that they've experienced. In Jesus' name, we believe, God, with them that they'll be able to start a family. We pray for Austin and Alyssa, Lord, that you would touch their unborn baby that has this heart defect. In the name of Jesus, we believe for Beth's daughter, Mindy, for Sally's daughters today, that their pregnancies, God, are going to be safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for these that you've done so much for, Lord, that are continuing their path of recovery today from so many different situations. We believe for Brantley and for Allison, for Nick and for Karen's mother, for Gerald Yeely and for Johnny Ray and for Willow. We believe for Sylvia's daughter today, God, that they're going to fully recover in the mighty name of Jesus, we believe for each one whose name we've called out today that's battling cancer. Lord, there's none of these situations that are too hard for you. Hallelujah. We believe that every person that's listed here is going to be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it, Lord, by faith. We believe that you're a rewarder today. Hallelujah. We believe, God, that those that diligently seek you are going to see results. And we give you the praise. Hallelujah. We lift up these other physical needs today, God. You see every person on this list today, and you know their individual condition. And we pray for them in your mighty name. We speak healing for, Kel for Kelly and for Jen and for Bonnie and Roxanne, Annette and Ethan. We speak healing for Britt Moore and James Graham for Tim Workman and Emily Stanley. We speak healing for Beulah and Russ and for my father. We rebuke Parkinson's disease in the name of Jesus. We pray for Cheryl and for Renee, for Abel and Abram and Sophia and Magnolia. We believe for their healing together right now. 
We pray for baby Elsie. We pray, Lord, for Linda Brown. We pray for Britt's mother and for Shirley Garner. You're the healing, Lord. Uh, you're the healer of every injury that we suffer. We pray for Rue today, God, believing for his uh, complete healing. We pray for Karen's father in Jesus' name. We pray for Marty Delata. We come against MS in the name of Jesus. There's no disease, no sickness that can stand before you, O oh God. We pray for Shirley and Charlotte. We believe for healing of the kidneys today. We pray for Jason. We pray for Brent and Everett and for missionary Robin Shute's dad. There's no heart problem, Lord, that can stand before you today. You took stripes for our healing, and we claim it in Jesus' name. We pray for healing of the lungs for Kendra and Robbie. We pray for healing of autoimmune disease for Sister Mara Sullivan today. Hallelujah. We proclaim it. We claim it, Lord, in your name. We believe for Marcia and Terry and Michael, Lord, for healing of their stomach issues. We pray for Bobby Larmy, Lord. He needs your touch right now, a work that only you can do. We pray, God, for Brother and Sister Perkins, that you would encourage and strengthen them this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Pam Wilcox, Lord, that that fluid would stop building up on her lungs. We pray for Leslie Pride for a touch of his mind today. Lord, be with his family, encourage and strengthen them today. We pray for Gary and Donna, for Catherine, for Sister Dorothy Cook, for Brother Erickson, for Brother Andy Burnett and, and Don Bowie, who are still recovering from COVID. We pray for Donna Luttrell, Del Sifford, James Weininger, and Pastor Del Holman's mother, who are dealing with post-COVID issues of not being able to regain their strength and, and having continued blood sugar and respiratory issues. Lord, we come against those symptoms right now. In the name of Jesus, we believe for complete wholeness for them. We believe for these family issues today, the families that are suffering. We pray, God, that you would intervene for Angela, for Cheryl and her family, uh, for Grace's friend today, for Annette and Dave, and for Jessica and Jamie, for Sister Marcia's family, Lord. We pray for every spiritual need that's ongoing in different ones' lives today. We pray, God, for Carmen's daughter, Grace. We pray for Lori's mother, for Art Chandler, for Marcia Moore's children and granddaughter. We pray for Michelle Clark and her family. We pray for Caroline's family, Lord, for Jennifer and Brenda's family. We lift up Jamie and, and Debbie's niece today. You see both of them, God, that you would move on their behalf. We pray for Terry Adams' children, for Sylvia's family, for Tasha's husband, and for Tasha's sister. We pray, Lord, for Pam's children, for Peggy Fiedler and her family. We pray for Beulah's family this morning, Lord. We pray for Josiah. Oh, God, deal with their hearts. Draw them to yourself right now. We pray for Barbara Owen's salvation. We pray for salvation for Haley and Evie and Connor, for Rose and Carl today, for Mark and Caitlin. We pray for our Job Corps students and those uh, who have attended there in the past and been a part of our church. Uh, wherever they are today, God be with them. Hallelujah. Help them to remember the experience that they've had with you and to return to that and to become established in the faith. Uh, we pray for Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer, Lord. We pray for Judy's brother, Lewis, Lord, that he would be saved. Above all else, Lord, that's our greatest desire for our families uh, is that they would be right with you, that they would be ready, Lord, to make heaven their home in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the nursing home residents and shut-ins today. We pray, Lord, protection for those working in the school systems today and for all the students uh, in Jesus' name, we pray for continued recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those whose mental health has been affected by this uh, trying time, Lord, over the past year. We pray for Nathan, Lord, for victory over depression. We pray for Patrick today. We pray for comfort, healing, and restoration for Brother and Sister Woody's family. We pray, God, that the ministry that Brother Mark Tipton is engaged in ministering to the homeless community there in his area, God, in the Huntsville area, we believe, God, for your blessing upon it today for many souls to come into the kingdom through that ministry. 
And we pray for Phil and Karen today, God, that you would continue to work in their situation. You are the mighty God. Have your way, O oh God. Move today according to your divine will. Help us, God, to perceive your answers and to receive them. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let it be done according to your perfect plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of prayer ministry once again today. Let's come back again tomorrow morning at 730, and let's uh, pray together again. Let's believe uh, together again from the Word of God, and let's work on this uh, negative talk. Let's rid it from our, our thoughts and from our speech so that our uh, conversation can be acceptable. Our, our meditation, the thoughts of our heart will be acceptable in the sight of God who is our strength and our Redeemer. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m.